Every accessory you need to get the most out of your go-to is in this carry case. So let's go through what's in here. The carry case itself is an awesome accessory. There are lots of small bits for the go-to and you can lose them very easily. So I prefer to keep everything organized and protected in a single carry case. The hard shell keeps everything protected and it's convenient to find what you're looking for instead of fumbling around lots of small bits in a bag pocket. In the main compartment, there is a placeholder for the action mount adapter, the pivot stand, the magnetic prong mount, easy clip, the go to, and the magnetic screw mount. In the second compartment, there is room to store the magnet pendant, charging cable, and ND filters. So let me show you how to use each accessory to its full potential. There are two ways to get the best POV shots with the Go 2. One using the magnet pendant and two using the easy clip. To get the best POV shot with the magnet pendant, wear the pendant. Using the two black clips at the back, pull them apart to make the string shorter, just below your shoulders. And by making the string shorter, the Go 2 will sway less and be more steady. Then put the pendant under your t-shirt and place the go to on top. And now you can hit record and do your activity. There are some limitations to using the magnet pendant. You need to physically turn your body left or right to look around. And there's no real way of looking up or down. And it's very easy to just wipe off the camera whilst you're doing an activity. If you need the go to to look where your eyes are looking, then the easy clip might be a better option for you. To get the best POV shot from the easy clip, I recommend you mount the easy clip on the back of the hat and with the easy clip in the central position, tilt it down by one step. If you mount the easy clip on the front of the hat, then the go to is a little bit further away from your eyes. So you will need to stretch your arms a little bit further away to get your hands in frame. When you mount the easy clip on the back of your hat, then the go to is further back. So you don't need to stretch your arms too far in front of the go to to get your hands in frame. And this is particularly useful when you're in small environments, like when you're driving a car, for example, you can get your hands on the steering wheel in frame. And since the go to is mounted on your head, it will look wherever you look, to the left, to the right, up and down. You need to use the right type of mount depending on how much motion is in your video. If there is no motion or moderate motion in your video, like taking a still video or walking in the park, then you can use magnetic mounts like the pivot stand, the screw mount and the prong mount. It's super quick and easy to remove the go to from the magnetic mount and put it into your charging case to top up the battery. If there is extreme motion in your video, for example, off-road bike riding or FPV, then you need to use the action mount adapter. This adapter will ensure that your go to does not detach from the mount. Vibrations and shocks can potentially shake out the go-to from the magnetic mount. And if you crash, then the go-to can potentially go flying off the magnetic mount. So anytime you are doing activities with extreme motion, always use the action mount adapter. The pivot stand is probably the best accessory ever made for the go-to. You can stick it almost anywhere. Remove the back cover and the plastic, stick the pivot stand onto a smooth surface, you can twist the head 360 degrees and tilt the head up and down. To remove the pivot stand from the surface, just lift off one side of the pivot stand carefully and it will eventually peel off. After each use, you need to rinse the sticky bit with water and ensure the surface is clean for reuse. And finally, the last thing in this case is the Freewell ND filters. ND filters are essentially used to create motion blur in video. Motion blur is natural. If you wave your hands really fast in front of your face, you'll see motion blur in between your hand movements. So to get motion blur in camera, you need to control the shutter speed. If you set a low shutter speed, then the video will have more motion blur. And if you set a high shutter speed, then the video will have less motion blur. Remember that video you recorded, which looks too blurry and has a lot of micro jitters? That's because your shutter speed was set too low. So you need to control the shutter speed to get the correct amount of motion blur. The shutter speed shouldn't be so low that it gives you micro jitters and it shouldn't be so high that it looks too unnatural. If there is no motion in your video, then your shutter speed should be twice your frame rate. 
If there is moderate motion in your video, then your shutter speed should be eight times your frame rate. And if there is extreme motion in your video, then your shutter speed should be 16 times your frame rate. In this example, the shot on the left is set to 1500 shutter speed using no ND filter. And the shot on the right is set to 160 shutter speed using ND8. The shot on the right looks more natural and pleasing to the eye because it's set to the correct shutter speed given more motion blur. But here's the problem. You need to connect the Go 2 to the Insta360 app to set the shutter speed manually. Are you really going to connect the Go 2 to the Insta360 app, set manual exposure settings, and start and stop recording on the app every time you take a shot with the Go 2? Probably not. The ND filters are just not worth the hassle if you're recording memories with your Go 2. These ND filters are worth the hassle if you want to use the Go 2 for FPV because the motion blur will make your footage look more cinematic and fast. That's it for this video. Hit the like button if you learned something new and I'll see you in the next video.